Now it's working. <laughs> Good morning. Old guys and new tools. Mm, <laughs> electronics. So welcome. We're starting our new project today. We have a customer not far from here that uh, is going to put five of these little tiny houses. And they're actually not two little tiny houses. Uh, we're calling them convertible or transformer houses. And they're going to average around 12 feet wide, 16, 18, 20 feet long. Each one will be unique. And so Tim and I are here to uh, uh, introduce you today to um, the first of these units and show you how to build it. So, Tim, show us what you're doing right here. Well, I'm cutting some pipe. This is what the jacks will go on to so that the building can be lowered and raised uh, when it's being put or being transported and also for stability when it's in place. Can you show us one on the We've got existing one right unit? Here. Jack will be pinned right into here, and it'll be uh, you'll be able to raise it and lower it with a handle. Very easy to do, um, but we're going to weld these onto the sides of the metal frame, so okay. they'll have real stability. And I said that over there. We're working on the frame there, and then we're going to set the new house up right here on these these pylons. Okay, back at you in a little bit. Yeah, we don't want too big a fan base. Is How that, long are you cutting those? These are exactly three inches long so that they stick out far enough from the rain screen so that they can be put on there with uh, the pins that hold the jack foot, the footing on there. All right, so last time we did two holes, but I think this time we're just, or we did the ability to drop pins in two directions, but I think we're just going to do one this time so that we can take them on and off. We really don't need to pivot them for travel. We throw them in the truck when we go down the yeah. road. Yeah, just take them okay. off. They're so, removable, so they don't have to be there, but then they can be put on when they're needed. All right, I'm gonna walk over and take a quick look at the jack. Now, this is a jack we use for a smaller application, but um, a tractor supply, you can find them. At Harbor Freight, you can find them. They're basically what they call mules. You can see that jack right there. So that pen couples on right here, and we'll show you that a little bit later on. Okay, so we're cutting the <laughs> camera angle is important, I know, guys. So uh, we're cutting this uh, steel. This is our 11 gauge 4x4 four four, uh, red iron, and you'll see we've already got a good start on it over here. Where we've cut across here and I've cut across there. Now we'll cut the diagonals. All we're using is a speed square and some chalk. But what's important is using an electric reciprocating saw. The battery saws just don't hold up. You'll notice this blade right here is well used. I've cut probably 30 feet with that and it's still in good shape. What we're using is this Milwaukee double duty and it's called the torch. Now you'll notice on this six inch that it's got a straight edge on it but this guy right here has a curved edge you see the curved edge on there that curved edge is so important uh, because it allows you you'll start it here and then you come down and you'll be cutting just like this if it was flat all the way across here it would want to just walk across here and to uh to, the reason this blade has lasted so long is we use high lube, high temp uh, wheel bearing grease. And so that I don't contaminate this, I put a little bit in here. And that's what we dip our drill bits in, um, dip our saw blades in, take a little bit, smear it on. You see all the trash that ends up in there? Yeah, you sure don't want that in your uh, in your and your wheel bearing grease that uh, we use for our trailer axles. Okay, so I'm gonna cut through here and set up our 45 degree angles. This is a 24 foot stick. We're cutting it basically in half, but we're just gonna cut the angles, uh, 45 degree angles, so that uh, it's our front and our back post for our steel foundation for our new transformable tiny house. You're gonna wanna stick around because this guy it's going to have uh, full rain screens, 10-foot ceilings, elevator beds that are built on a counterbalance with about a five, um, maybe about a five-pound friction, 
and the there'll be a clawfoot tub, a great big open shower, <clears throat> and the clawfoot tub will be covered with uh, the entertainment center. And when you want to take a bath, you just literally, uh, it's also on a floating platform with a counterbalance. You'll just be able to push the, the uh, entertainment center up to the ceiling and, and take a beautiful bath. Um, you'll see it'll have canopy beds. Oh, you're going to love it. And a big porch, 6 by 12 porch on it. So this is a house that you'll be able to rent on Airbnb. And then if you want to buy it, uh, the customer wants to have them, have you be able to come and stay in it for a while see which of the models you like and make a purchase right there and have it uh, hauled to your location. Talk to you soon. Okay, so we've got our metal frame set up. Now all we have to do is make sure that it is square. Ah. Thanks, Tim. If you'll notice, we've got all of our edges where they're flush and squared on both ends, flush on this side, flush on that side. So we're going from the outside corner to the outside corner. We have 280 and a quarter inches. Let's go to the other side. Real important to take all the slack out. Okay. 280 and a quarter inches, great. Now had that been out a little bit, we'd have slid this in or out depending on to make it the exact same. Now we have to do, go ahead and let her go. Now all we have to do is mark right along here, all the way around, cut them, weld them. Now we could use our squares and mark these at 45, but what if we were an eighth inch off over there and then an eighth inch off here, now we've got a quarter inch gap. This way uh, we're fitting, fitting these pieces of steel together. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Wanted to give you an update on what Tim's doing. He's using that reamer and he's finishing out the holes. We'll check that out in a little bit further. Okay, so we've got all of our corners ground down to where they fit nice and tight on a 45 degree angle, squared. And so next thing we're going to do is we're going to weld these plates, these support plates on the side of our beams, and then we'll put our brackets onto there. We want to get a real good weld all the way around there to stiffen it up. So here we go. See you in a minute. Okay. So now we've got all these guys on. we get the pins all in the same direction got the supports on we've welded here we've welded inside um, we've welded top bottom now it's time to turn these guys finish fitting these and weld all of our frame together at least outside perimeter okay so here's our base frame uh, we're two foot on centers with the uh, one and a half by three inch rectangular tube uh, 14 gauge a red iron and then the 11 gauge 4x4 four four. we took the cutoffs and we built them into the corners here Let's see if you can see that in the corner so um, that's our basic right there so we'll see you guys uh, next week and keep following along you're gonna love how this thing comes out so not only will you know how to build it you'll know what it's made of You'll be able to go and rent it and stay in it for as long as you'd like. And if you want to buy it from the customer that we're building for, uh, you can buy it at a great price. So, and if that's not the one for you, then there'll be three or four other ones to choose from as well. Sounds like a deal. See you soon.